The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller Chapter 1 My father was a king and the son of kings. He was a short man, and most of us were, and built like a bull, all shoulders. He married my mother when she was 14, and sworn by the priestess to be fruitful. It was a good match. She was an only child, and her father's fortune would go to her husband. He did not find out until the wedding that she was simple. Her father had been scrupulous about keeping her veiled until the ceremony, and my father had rumored him. If she was ugly, there were always slave girls and serving boys. When at last they pulled off the veil, they say my mother smiled. That is how they knew she was quite stupid. Brides did not smile. When I was delivered, a boy, he plucked me from her arms and handed me to a nurse. In pity, the midwife gave my mother a pillow to hold instead of me. My mother hugged it. She did not seem to notice a change had been made. Quickly, I became a disappointment. Small, slight, I was not fast, I was not strong, I could not sing. The best that could be said of me was that I was not sickly. The colds and the crumbs that seized my peers left me untouched. This only made my father suspicious. Was I a challenging inhuman? He scowled at me, watching. My hand shook, filling his gaze. And there were, was my mother dribbling wine on herself. I am five when it is my father's turn to host the games. Men gathered far, as far as Thessaly and Sparta. In our storehouses grew rich with their gold. A hundred servants worked for twenty days beating out the racing track and clearing it of stones. My father is determined to have the finest games of his generation. I remember the runner's best, not brown bodies slicked with oil, stretching on the track beneath the sun. They mix together, broad-shouldered husbands, beardless youths and boys, their calves all thickly carved with muscle. The bull had been killed, sweating the last of its blood into the dust and dark bronze bowels. It went quietly to its death, a good omen for the ga games to come. The runners are gathered before the days where my father and I sit, surrounded by prizes we will give to the winners. There are golden mixing bowls for wine, beaten bronze tripods, ashwood spears tipped with precious iron. But the real prize is in my hands. A wreath of dusty green leaves, freshly slipped, clipped, wrapped to a shine by my thumb. My father has given it to me grudgingly. He reassures himself all I have to do is to hold it. The, young, the youngest boys are running first, and they wait, shuffling their feet in the sand for the nod from the priest. They're in their first flash of roof, bones sharp and spindly poking against toad skin. My eyes catches on the light head among vessels of shot dark, tousled crowns. I lean forward to see, hair lit like honey in the sun, and within it glints of gold, the circlet of a prince. He's shorter than the others, and still plump with childhood, in a way they are not. His hair is long and tied back with leather, it burns against the dark, bare skin of his back. His face, when he turns, is serious as a man's. When the priest strikes the ground, he slips past the thickened bodies of the older boys. He moves easily, his heels flashing pink as licking tongues he wins. I stare at my father, lifts the garland from my lap, and crowns him, and leaves him almost black against the brightness of his hair. His father, Peleus, comes to claim him, smiling and proud. Peleus' kingdom is smaller than ours, but his wife is rumored to be a goddess. And his people love him, 
My father, my own father watches with envy. His wife is stupid and his son too slow to raise in even the youngest group. He turns to me. That is what a son should be. My hands feel empty without the garland. I watch the king Pelias embrace his son. I see the boy toast the garland in the air and catch it again. He is laughing and his face is bright with victory. Beyond this, I remember little more than the scattered images from my life then. My father frowning on his throne, a cunning toy horse I loved. My mother on the beach, her eyes turned towards the Aegean. In this last memory, I am skipping stones for her. Plink, plink, plink across the sea, skin of the sea. She seems to like the way the ripples look, dispersing back to glass. Or perhaps it is the sea itself she likes. At her temple, a starburst of white gleams like bone. The scar from the time her father hit her with the hilt of a sword. He pokes, her toes spoke up from the sun where she has buried her. And I'm cheerful not to disturb them as I search for rocks. I chose, I choose one and fling it out, glad to be good at this. It is the only memory I have of my mother, and so golden that I am almost sure I have made it up. After all, it was unlikely for my father to have allowed us to be alone together. A simple son and simpler wife. And where are we? I don't recognize the beach, the view of coastline. So much has passed since then.